Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Um, this video is going to be a, a third update on the uh, development of the farm and it's going to be the third season which was 2022. Just like to apologize for the delay in getting these videos out. Um, just with Christmas was really busy and then I took a little bit of a break and so I'm getting around to it now. And I also noticed that we're coming very close to 2,000 subscribers and I did promise you that I would do a live Q&A if we hit that. So if you would like to um, hit like, subscribe and share this and if we get to the 2,000 I think it'd be really fun if we done a live Q&A and I can answer any of your questions, anything, thoughts or ideas you have and we can kick them out and I think it'll be a bit of fun. So let's get into today's video. So 2021 was, um, was kind of our third season on the farm and right away in spring um, the plan was to start to plant more fruit trees and berry bushes and there's a couple of thousand euros worth of uh, berry bushes and fruit trees in that pallet there and we the previous spring we had planted um, maybe a third of the farm and this was going to do get us up to at least half the farm planted out and my plan in going forward was that I could propagate with the stock I had and fill out the rest of the farm over the coming years. Um, so we had uh, berries there, I had gotten gooseberry, honeyberry, blackcurrant, redcurrant, whitecurrant, joshua berry, strawberries um, and my plan was to kind of fill out half of the farm with berries and then over the coming years we could propagate the rest of that out um, and I filled out more of my, I think I put in a lot of nut trees that year, um, hazelnut, uh, cob nuts and, and just kind of trying to fill out the whole agri silvo pasture system on the farm. We also were trying to get some veg beds in and this was mainly for our own growing. Originally at the very start I'd, I'd thought about growing veg but I very soon realized that I just hadn't enough time to do all that but we did want to grow our own veg and I I still like to toy with the idea of maybe a salad green enterprise so we put in our own veg beds now where we put those beds it wasn't the best of places because they were quite exposed and I subsequently decided to move them uh, a few years later but um, we got them all in and they were looking really nice and we grew some really nice veg. One of the big things I was trying to focus on for this year on the farm was efficiency of my time and really focusing on the productive enterprises on the farm and so up to this point I was completely human powered um, it was just me in a wheelbarrow and I had decided I had worked out that time was where my limiting time factors were and so I bought myself a bicycle and a quad uh, that was just purely to move me and stuff around faster and I didn't invest that much I think it was 2000 for the quad maybe like 200 euros for the bike but they both paid for themselves pretty fast and how they saved me time. The other big thing was I wanted to, do, to really become efficient with my eggmobile moves. I was running two eggmobiles again this year, um, full tilt. And so I, I perfected my, my self-propelled eggmobiles with my winch. I mounted it on this little dolly and it meant that I could uh, go out, move my eggmobiles in a much more streamlined fashion. And it was also a bit safer as well. So that, that was a good improvement. One of, the, one of the bigger things that happened this season was I took on a new farm um, and it, I didn't really go looking for it. A um, person came to the gate one day and was inquiring about me and was asking me if I would be interested in managing some land for them. And they wanted someone to manage this land in a, in a chemical free manner. And I took them in and showed them around my farm and explained what I was doing. And they said, perfect I would love for you to come and look at my farm and would you be interested in managing it and now when they came to this farm first it was uh, wildflower meadows but through poor management and overgrazing for the last you know 20 odd years it was just completely overtaken in uh, soft rushes and sages and gross and I looked at the farm and I was really run down but I seen loads of potential and it was about there's pasture land, there was hill land, there was a nice variety and it was very typical of land in, in the general area and I thought this would be a really cool project. Um, it was much more degraded than the farm I had moved on to. I thought this would be a really cool project to get stuck into and see if I can use holistic management and good regenerative farming practices to turn land around and how long would it take. Um, and there was there's about six acres of ground here um, so I doubled my 
my acreage almost, but um, this was very degraded, so it hadn't really a high uh, nutritional value, but I knew we could improve that. And the next thing, and this was kind of a big uh, step for me because up to this point, everything I had invested in the farm was movable. Polytunnels, shipping containers, everything could move or it was on wheels. Um, but I needed a brooder and I also needed kind of a more permanent covered area uh, for storage of stuff. So I wanted to build a brooder and now this structure is still not that permanent. It's just wood bolted together, um, a little lean-to with some blocks, but um, it was my first investment. and. I built this in 2021, but I bought a lot of the material in 2020, so it was still the material was still very reasonably priced. I think it cost me about three thousand euros altogether to do the whole thing, and I had a lovely little brooder. And one of the big new or new animals in the farm we had got this year was goats. Um, I was interested in producing my own milk, and maybe even looking at uh, producing dairy as an enterprise in the farm down the line. So I didn't see any suitable cow breeds that I could do, so I thought goats was a better one. So I got Nelly here, and for Nelly, I learned to milk with Nelly. Um, and we got a few more goats at it for later on that year, and it just started figuring out all the ins and outs of goats and milking and what to do with it. Um, I had bought some sheep onto the farm. Uh, one thing I found this year was it's very, I, my system of buying in uh, young animals in the spring um, was spring growth could come and it could get it, the grass could get away from me very quickly. It can be difficult to get young animals early in the spring. So this year I had bought in um, what we call, uh, there were one year old female sheep, so hoggets or gimmers you may call them. And they done really well um, on the farm that year. We got in, this was our layer flock just, just cut in. We ran two egg mobiles this year. Um, egg production was in full tilt and it was a really good year for us with eggs. Um, we went full tilt and we made we made really good money and like e eggs was a centerpiece enterprise of our farm here that you know this was paying for a lot of the stuff that was happening on the farm um, and you know it was money coming in every week and um, we were very very lucky that year with, with a really good year for the for the layers. With the brooder um, I was really trying to set up this year to be a big year for broilers. Um, up to this point I was only doing like a couple of hundred, three, five hundred broilers a year because I didn't really have the infrastructure or anything in place. So I really wanted to push and focus on broilers. And it just happened to be that it was one of the worst years um, for broilers. The spring was really, really cold and wet. Um, cold for a long time, which, which was not really ideal for broilers. And uh, then once the summer did get going, I ended up getting Newcastle's disease in my brooder. So my initial plans was to do like 1,500, 2,000 birds that year. And I think I ended up doing like 700 birds. Um, but that's just the way it goes in farming. You know, you'll have years you're going to have really good enterprises and you're going to have years where things just go tits up the wrong way. And that was just the case for brothers. But it was a big learning for me because I kind of realized for me here on the west coast of Ireland, um, you know, using Ross 308 or even a, a Hubbard, this kind of more vigorous breed, I only really have like three months in midsummer where I can really, if I want to do truly um, pasture raised chicken, I've got like June, July and August to get my production done. Um, it's just too risky going outside of that. So that was a big learning curve for me um, with the broilers. The next thing I, I got going that spring was uh, I got my honesty box set up in the farm here because I had my honesty box at my dad's farm and I eventually, this got put off a few times, but I eventually got my, I think to the joy of my customers, I got my honesty box going at the farm here. And I was still working very hard in sales, um, you know, putting a lot of time in and I was doing a lot of drop off, drop off points um, several times a week, um, trying to service my customers really well. And just get the farm's name out there and get my story and let people know what I'm doing and building up the business like that. But this was a big year of sales for us. We were producing a lot of eggs, chicken, turkeys, pork. Um, so we had, we had lots of products available and so our sales numbers were going up and up and up, which was really good for the farm um, uh, because we were starting to pay off uh, pay all the stuff that we had invested in and starting to make some money. Um, one of the other big things was this was the first time uh, I started to feel, like I mentioned earlier, 
rooted and I was able, I used to have dogs when I was a kid, but in my early 20s and that I was moving around a lot and I felt I didn't have the stability to have a dog. So finally we got Jess, um, which was a, a big step um, for the farm, our own little mascot. And yeah, it was, it was a really good summer. The other thing that we started was to this point, I, I, education was always an important aspect in my holistic context and I wanted to start to share what I was doing on the farm. So we ran several trainings this summer um, to, to share our findings and our learnings. And I, the farm was starting to become quite successful or you know, our enterprises were starting to do well. And so my time was actually starting to get more and more valuable. valuable. I was doing consultation work, but it's quite expensive. Um, my, my hourly rate is quite expensive now. And I wanted a way for people to come and learn um, and be more uh, affordable. So by bulking train and uh, multiple people into one training day, it can become affordable, uh, but also it, it is effective for me. Um, and there's just some things I find that uh, the likes of YouTube here, um, it's all fine and well as a medium to uh, transfer information, but it, it's there's nothing like coming to the farm and getting a hands-on training just the the back and forth talking and the, you know the questions that opens up and it, it's you know YouTube you see kind of everything at its best a lot of the time um, whereas when you come and you get it hands-on you get a realistic um, view of how things are and and I find that is, is vital um, for helping people uh, who want to get into this or who are thinking about getting into this type of farming or maybe enterprises that I do on the farm one of the other big enterprises that we got up and running on the farm towards the middle of the summer was agritourism. And again, it was one of these things that kind of found me as opposed to me going looking for it. And it became a very lucrative enterprise on the farm. Um, and it also opened the farm up. We were running open days and a lot of tours. And it was just getting, getting word out there about the farm, which really helped with the marketing and also growing our sales. And when I look back, um, it was it's a lot. I had done a lot of work this this summer. We had we had there. It was the first year we'd taken on an intern, um, but I had put a lot of work in. It was work building infrastructure, just doing the daily chores, then doing tours and trainings. It was a lot, as well as managing all the deliveries. But I look back now. We, we, you know, we done a lot of work that summer. But we made we made good money, which paid for a lot of the infrastructure on the farm. So. <clears throat> The next year as well, 2022, we done a lot and we paid for a lot. Um, and I look back now with great pride because I've got a lot of infrastructure and a really nice farm that's completely paid for um, through the hard work in these years. So it was tough at the time, but I definitely think it was worth it now um, in hindsight. And that, that makes me happy. So hopefully in the next video, we will look at 2022, which was last year, and we'll kind of do an evaluation of that and how that went. And um, maybe we'll look on to 2023 because I am currently sitting down and planning out. I'm a little bit late, but um, just before Christmas, I was a bit busy putting in the pond and one thing and another. And I kind of had it in the back of my head what I wanted to do anyway, but I'm currently putting that down on paper of what 2023 is going to look like. And maybe I'll walk through that with you as what my plans are, um, just to give you an idea how I. Uh, figure things out or try to organize them. I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do it. Everybody's going to have their own new, their own little nuanced way of doing it or how they like to do it. And that makes total sense. So thanks for watching guys. And again, um, to try and get us up to 2000 subscribers, please like and share and have a nice day.